in the right place at the right time. Sorry about that. Keep going to me. <laughs> That's big. Okay. I didn't record. It's, it, it's on my screen. That's all. I'm going to. Got it. Okay. So I just want you to know that I'm just a regular guy like you guys are. And I want you to just give it your best effort. I'm hoping that your drawings are better than mine by the time we're done. <laughs> I worked with some of the most amazing people in the world. And I was only as good as the people around me, honestly. I, I'm really more of a humble guy. So I'm just trying to tell you, I've had the greatest career, though. I got so lucky. And, you know, I did go to school and I did study and I did work my butt off. But so do all of you guys, you know, so I just want to say that if you have a dream of putting together a painting or something for Disney World, uh, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it, because right now Disney's going through a lot of changes and um, there's a lot of things happening in the country that are affecting what Disney's doing, which means things it's like an apple cart got turned over, kind of. And as the apples spread around, when we collect them back up again, you could be one of those apples, you know, so. I don't want you to give up on your dreams. I, you, none of you look too old to give up on a dream. I don't know if there's a such thing, but I'm 55 and I wake up and I, you know, I have a bowl of Fruit Loops and I go play in the trees like the Lost Boys. I don't, I'm never going to grow up. So I just want to say to you guys, thanks for coming on. And we're just going to take a simple little journey. I don't use an eraser really. I just sketch real light. And so if you can follow along, but you're welcome to use an eraser if you like. I don't think I've ever said those words before. I've never said that before. Yeah. <laughs> but I, these guys are here and they're ready. So it's really great. I love your backdrop with the magic kingdom, by the way. I think that's uh Caitlin. Yeah. That's really yes. Nice. And all of you guys. Yeah. I, I can't see much. I put on my glasses here. Oh, wow. You guys are pretty too. Look at you all. Uh, this sounds fun. So Matt, can, do they want to ask me any questions or talk to me about anything or do they even know who I am? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to say, we're going to ask you a question just to start out with, which is if we, we, we did a I'll whole podcast, you know. yeah. we did a whole podcast episode and that's, um, oh, the most people here, if you're watching this, you had the chance to listen to it early. Um, but the actual, the public access is going to be on Saturday, but for those who might not have had the chance to listen to it yet, give us the, the summary of a few of the projects that you worked on at Disney. Cause you Aww. were writing stuff, man. I'm so sorry. I thought that they knew and that. So when they came on to draw with me, they did. Well, who is this guy talking about? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Tell me how I think a lot. I think a lot no, but for the one for the one or two people who might not. I started off. No, I can just tell them. I started off uh, working for NFL Films and Steve Sable, which really helped me a lot because he was just a regular guy, as it turns out. And if you don't know, his father and himself were on the sidelines of the very first National Football League football game. And so they started a whole collection in a library of all the games every week back 80 years ago. So his dad gets older and he gets older and they start what's called NFL films and they won a hundred Emmys for making football follies and stuff. And being from Philadelphia, I just went across the bridge of New Jersey to, to go work there. I had a wife and kids and stuff. And then something horrible happened. I got in this terrible car accident. And for a year I had like a body cast. It was really bad. But when it was over, there was a settlement that came my way. And so I took my lovely wife and my kids on vacation to Walt Disney World. And uh, what you don't know is that when I was five years old, I was at Walt Disney World when it first opened on the day Roy dedicated the park to Walt with Mickey Mouse on a podium in front of all these fans. They were just hushed in silent tones. I was a five-year-old little boy. My dad was holding me up and I just saw like this great party for my birthday, you know, I'm five. And then when everybody stopped talking and Roy got to say how his brother died two months after I was born and how for five years, a team of people from that day on had worked wholeheartedly to bring Walt's dream. Cause Disneyland is a wonderful place, but it's like in a shoebox fit between other things. And Walt never forgave himself for having no choice, but to start it there. Thank God he did. But his real dream was to have a place where the imagination could grow and grow and grow and grow and grow for years after he was gone. So he dreamed of this place, Walt Disney World. He even had the colors picked out for the entrances and the exits for the Magic Kingdom and Epcot, which was his dream. So as a five-year-old boy, I go down there and it's my birthday, October 25th, 1971, I was five. And I went home and I just started sketching and doodling and drawing. I get coloring books and I color in all the eyes, you know, other kids are doing all kinds of other things, but not me. I just, I just wanted to draw. 
Well, flash forward now, I get the job at NFL Films, I get in a car accident, I take my family down on vacation, and my wife says to me, you belong here. What are you doing? You belong here. And I'm like, well, I know I love it here, but there's a 20-year waiting list for animation artists. And, you know, she's like, with all your education and all your heart and how much you love this place, just try. So we go home, and I'm pacing for a month thinking about it. Like, I couldn't get it out of my head. But I thought of a way that I could go to Disney World and maybe approach them and see if I can get a job as an animation artist. I know, it's ridiculous. Like, yeah, I'm just going to walk in. Hi, I'm Timmy. Give me a job. But as it turns out, for that month, I paced because I had to practice walking again. And as I'm pacing, the rest of my family's asleep. And I'm thinking of ways that I can really show them how I could teach the rest of the world how to draw the characters in a very simple way and have fun with it, you know? So I had it all in my head. I went down and it actually worked. And they said, oh, my God, where did you come from? And can you start Tuesday? And I got very, very lucky. I walked in like, you know, with a suit on, too. Like everyone else has got surfboards and Crocs on. And I'm in a three piece suit. But it, that a little bit more professionalism, I think that had to help because or I was so pathetic because I was sweating like crazy. That's why they had Crocs and shorts on. It's hot down there anyway. My life takes a turn for the worse a few years later, and I'm this big rock star in Disney as an animation artist, and I lose everything. Ugh, it was horrible. I'm um, kind of giving them the long story here, Matt, but it's, I think it's important that they hear it. Um, yeah, definitely. So I have to go fight for my kids in this horrible divorce thing. My wife started getting into prescription medications that were illegal with my brother, who who never had a job in his life. He's bald. He's fat. I, I know, still don't understand it to this day. I mean, I'm, I'm as handsome as, uh, what's his name? Who do, yeah, Gene Hackman on a good day for crying out loud. I know that, but, but imagine me, but 10 times worse. That's, she's, I couldn't understand it. She's wearing two rags. She's getting drunk. I have two little kids. So my life fell apart. And uh, I went home and fought for my kids and got them back and did all that. But it took four years. I went back to Disney and my job was gone. So I didn't know what to do. So the only job left I could think of was Imagineering. And the odds of that, you know, there's a 20 year waiting list for animators and 60,000 people apply worldwide for an animation job at Walt Disney World when they had it at Florida. So I got lucky once and I said, you know, let me get down four years later and try. And I wasn't so lucky. Everything was horrible. I got fired as a bus boy in Animal Kingdom Lodge, just trying to climb my way up. But then I got a phone call from somebody really cool. And uh, he said, you know, come on after your birthday and we're going to we're going to spoil you a little bit. It was a Cowboys game. I'm a big Dallas Cowboy fan, by the way. And uh, I met a guy who said, can you draw me Mickey Mouse as a Cowboys fan? I said, absolutely. And so the next thing I know, he says, here, call this person. And here it was the manager who's looking for talent to build a new attraction called Harry Potter and the world of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter over at Universal Studios. So I got to build all that stuff. Disney finds out. They call me over. Now I'm working doing Frozen and just the Polynesian, Typhoon Lagoon. I just had started climbing. And then finally, Disney said, we have this great project and we think we want you to work for us. And I said, OK, sure. I'd love to. You know, it's why I'm here. And then they gave me my hat on my birthday. So it was amazing. I got my Imagineer helmet. In fact, oh, it's right here. Yay. So I got to build some of the greatest attractions at Walt Disney World and Universal. And Matt, we're losing people. Is it my story? Am I, am I boring people? No, you're all, we're all, oh. I can see the faces on everybody. <laughs> well, I'm just seeing people appear and disappear. I'm thinking, oh no, I'm, I'm boring them to death. So I became a Walt Disney World animation artist. I became a Walt Disney World Imagineer and a Universal Studios art director to build all five of Harry Potter's things. In fact, I won Roller Coaster of the Year for 2019 for Harry Potter's, uh, I mean, Hagrid's uh, motorbike adventure right there between Hogwarts and, and Hogsmeade, which I built and painted and did all that. Now, not just me, too. I had a team of people to do it, but I just got very lucky with my career. So being an animator at NFL Films and then Disney and then Imagineering and art director for Universal Studios, I've had quite a career. I did have eight years of art school and four years of engineering school, though. And that goes back to my dad. He said, you're never going to make it as an artist. You have to have something to fall back on. And if he didn't tell me that, I wouldn't have went to engineering school because I didn't want to go. I had a scholarship for art school. But I went anyway, and it saved me because later on in life, when I got to Disney, 
that engineering helped me when we built Pandora. That was no easy task. You had to know what you're doing. There had to be double and triple redundancies in case a hurricane comes through. You can't have 7,000 pound vines swinging down, wiping out guests, you know, that's not cool. So there's a lot to learn. And I'm, and I think, I thank goodness I had such a great uh, technically mechanical career as well as an art career. So that's who I am. My name is Timmy Bright and I'm, what's that? Oh, and then when, when the pandemic happened, and this is so funny because remember when I told you that Walt had the dream down to the Magic Kingdom, down to the paint colors for the exits and the entrance to the Magic Kingdom in Epcot? He hadn't seen ahead yet into the Hollywood Studios or Animal Kingdom, but Epcot was his dream and the Magic Kingdom was kind of a, a bigger version of Disneyland. Well, when the pandemic happened, there I was. The very last project I worked on was painting the entrances and the exits to Epcot and the Magic Kingdom back to the original colors that Walt wanted when he dreamed of the place because they'd been changed 13 times over the years, over the 50 years. The pandemic happens and I say, man, I've just had quite a story. I'd love to go write it down, you know? And so somebody came into one of my animation classes 15 years ago, wrote this beautiful letter to Walt Disney World, which gave me one of my, my that's Catherine Bell, that's the writer. Uh, she wrote this letter. I got one of the Spirit of Disney Awards. I've the Spirit of Disney Award. I won that three times. I have 70 applause grams and 68 guest service fanatic cards. I've been in the eyes and the ears. I'm in the Imagineering story on Disney uh, the Plus, Disney Plus. It's only three seconds, but I'm in it, you know, and it's I, great. I saw you. I went back, I went back and looked just to make sure. And uh, I did it's see like 33 <laughs> minutes in there somewhere. You see three moments of me working on Pandora, which was a great honor because you know, there's only six episodes of that so far, but that's Walt and the Imagineering team. When he first started out, he had animators because Walt was basically a cartoonist at, at heart. Uh, but he got really uh, fascinated by what he could build with nature and building things. And so he got some en engineers together and they, they didn't understand each other. The, the, the artists and the animators are saying, well, we have to put this and we have to have this. And the Imagineers would go, yeah, but we have to have safety and we have to have steps. And, we have, and so there was a big battle and Walt decided, well, enough of this. He took one animator or one artist and put him with one engineer and made them work together and work it out another. And that's how Imagineering was born. Since then, though, it's only either been artists or engineers. I'm the only one in Walt Disney World that started out in animation and made it into Imagineering. So in our lifetimes, I have that to hold us something that I can be really proud of. Now, I did not do any of this by myself, like I still did before. People helped me. There was days when I didn't have anything to eat. So I'd be like, hey, here's an extra ham sandwich. Or I had no gas and I'd walk outside and find $20 on the ground. Somehow my path was always kind of lit up. All right, well, that's who I am. So would you like to sketch with me for a little while, guys? Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm sorry <laughs> about all that long introduction, but now no, you know who I am. I'm background. And it was a lot. I'm sorry. I, I wanted this to be more entertaining, but I didn't know. I thought they knew. I, I'm sorry, your podcast didn't go out yet. Yeah. I'm that's just that's some okay. stranger to these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I, I, they're, you're just kind of teasing out what they can expect to hear on the podcast episode, which is great, by the way. So if you guys haven't listened yet, definitely listen to the full story and then everyone else can hear it on Saturday. Yeah, there's there's a lot of drama in it. So that was a great podcast, by the way, Matt, really. Thank and then I can't imagine Thank how you. you must have edited it. I can't wait to hear it <laughs> again, you know. Minor tweak. Right, well, it. <laughs> so I, I just have a regular cheap ballpoint pen. I don't know if you can see it. I'll hold it up here. It's just a I think it costs 30 cents. I'm not sure. But what I love about it is that I can just do this. So you see my model sheet here. Whenever you work for Disney, you try to keep things as accurate as possible. So we're just going to go off that model sheet. And the first thing I'd like to do is keeping in mind that his ears are pretty tall on my page here. I want to make sure that I don't really cross like this line. Let me get my pen work in here. There we go. So at the top of the page, we just have a little, I just want to make a little mark so you know that I really don't want to go any higher than that. And somewhere down here would be his feet if we're going to get that far. Because I would like to do Piglet and Gus Gus and Zerg if we could. So real quick, I'm going to move at a nice speed, but it's real simple. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start with a circle about the size of an orange right about there. And if you could zoom in and show them how scratchy and, yeah, show them all the lines. Like, look, I'm just finding my shape, but very lightly. I do that so that I can... 
put you'll have to show them it's too late for them i hope so yeah because these are the really light lines the lines will get darker but i want to sh and so i want to bring a horizontal and a vertical guideline kind of shows me the center of the sphere now piglet's head is not round but we have to get to the center of it and here's why because right here are your block of my view of that now thank you so much i appreciate that <laughs> make like a little gumdrop in this quadrant where these lines meet and we're off and running the hardest part is getting started and once we have this and you'll see i'm scribbling my lines i'm not worried about anything i do know however that once we have a nose oh guys we could just bring his mouth right here underneath of it. I made his a little longer in mine because I want him to be really happy. But that's pretty simple. Now we want to bring his nose off of his face. So we do that with a nice long line like this. And you can see how Piglet is coming along. Right here where these meet, oh, we throw a little cheek. And then we have to balance that out with the mouth here. So we bring the other cheek over here. And I just have two cheeks. Because Piglet is like this wonderful, happy character. But in this picture, he's just kind of dreamy. Now, Winnie the Pooh has very round eyes. Piglet's eyes are very oval, though. So I want you to think of like little peanut M&Ms or something. And we kind of kind of put them like right on those cheeks. Now, we didn't have to worry about his head or the shape of his head or his ears. All we had to start with was the center of the drawing. And then symmetrically, if our spacing is right, like my eye might be over a little far. I just thought it was a little too close at first, but I think I'm, I'm okay now. We have a nice thing, then just come up from his eye, and there's where your circle kind of comes in. You can make an eyebrow right there. And then with that one, you just space this one up, put up the other one, really simple. Piece of cake, yay. Now he is a piggy, so we gotta give him kind of a double chin, and we're just gonna put a little scratchy line right there. Now he's really thoughtful today, and you know, usually it's blustery and it's cold, but apparently it's springtime. So I'm going to use this part of his mouth and I'm going to give him a little bit of a cheek here. I'm just going to put a little bit of a round shape right there. That's all. I notice it'll come down here, though, when I finish it. So I just come down to where I want it to finish and I just slide my pen along. Really pretty simple. Come across because I know that's going to be leading to the other part of his head, but we're not there yet. We come back up here. And now we're, this is an S curve. It goes in two directions. We call that an S curve in animation. And we're going to go ahead and bring up his head. And we're going to stop there for a second. I want to check with everybody. How's everybody doing? We're not moving too fast, are we? So far, so good here. <laughs> All right. Can they hear Keep me? it up. Oh, good. Okay. okay, good. Well, I'll just take a break here and just let you guys kind of catch up. Because all I want to do now is bring down this part of his head here. So I want you to just have that. Just get this like dome here. See, in animation, we realize that kids' eyes are the same shape your whole life. But when your face is smaller, it makes your eyes look so much bigger. And what also helps is a big forehead. So the Winnie the Pooh characters, when they were designed, and we're talking about 100 years ago, basically, they, Winnie the Pooh is actually drawn by A.A. A. Milne before Walt's, Walt Disney Studios picked it up. I'm going to shade in his nose a little bit, too, just to give him some, a little value jump there. Uh, Winnie the Pooh is actually two years older than Mickey Mouse in, in real life. So the Winnie the Pooh characters Disney made are not that old, but I just want to let you know that animation has come a long way. So when they readapted them, they made them with this formula of these big foreheads and little tiny cute eyes only because they're stuffed animals. If they were alive, they'd have eyes kind of like Eeyore and stuff, which doesn't make sense. Eeyore is a stuffed animal too. I'm just saying. That's kind of what they were thinking with the little piglet and little poo. Because A.A. A. Milne sketched them off of little stuffed animals he had around the house for his son. And so some of the animals had big mm -hmm. eyes with whites and other animals just had buttons. So let's put in his ear. We're going to put in one ear here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get to basically the shape of the meat of his ear. One there and one here. Kind of looks like a mouse. Real light. But then we know in animation that we can stretch and squash anything. So I'm going to bring this other S curve here and look, it's a beautiful ear. I want to round it off at the tip though. I don't want to make it pointy. And look at these beautiful lines. So graceful and elegant. And that part of his head is there. Now this part, I have a kind of light because I want to bring in this. 
this part of his ear is right on his head. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it here like this. There's that beautiful S curve that makes up his ear. It's round, not pointy. And then bring it right back down to here. And I'm sculpting as I'm going. Like when we built, you know, all the things in Disney, you have to sculpt the mud, we call it. I can bring this out a little wider here. My first instincts are pretty close. We'll bring, now we can bring down his head here and I can make it darker. Now with a magic marker, if you have one, you could just go and with nice smooth lines, kind of commit to the lines that you've created with the pen. And then all your sketch lines, they just kind of fade back. They don't really, because the value jump between this deep black and the white of the page is stronger than the gray of the pen. And you have a lot more contrast. And just like that, we have Piglet's head. And I'm just going to go over this. Now, oh, and his other eye. Yeah. Hi, Piglet. He's so happy. Yay. He's got one hand resting on his face. So I'm just going to take my pen and kind of make like a little an, an oval, kind of right where his hand is supposed to be. Because then I can just make his cheek, which you'll notice lines up with this cheek because symmetrically we're doing things the right way here. And then his cheek's gonna come in and take over his hand a little bit because his hand is resting in the fat of his cheek. When you do that, oh guys, then you just go ahead and make the simplest of little paws. It's just a little shape here like this and a little shape here like this. And then we can stop before we do the rest of his arm, which we probably don't have to. I just wanted to show you the thoughtful piglet, how cute he is. I'm bringing down his arm here. And then that's really all it is in this drawing. It's not that, that detailed and intricate. A couple lines here. Bring out his, his back because he is kind of sitting, thinking. We would wing that around here. And there you'll have Piglet. And I can go over some of this. And we can move on to Gus Gus. Who I love because he's so dumb. Oh, he makes me laugh. He really is. He's just so stupid. But he's brave and he's loyal and he's true. He, he very quickly becomes one of Cinderella's favorites. She frees him from a mousetrap. Now, just, for, just to get this right here, his shoulder would be around here. And you can make that shape very simply here, really light with your pen. And this is how we do it in animation. We start like this. This is just what we would call the rough sketches. Then we lay this on top of a light board throw tracing paper on top of it and really get a paintbrush and paint in these lines so they're gorgeous. Then that's transferred again to uh, a clear cell where then we'll have other artists, color artists go flip it over and paint the back of it. So the black lines are on the top and the colors on the bottom. And when you shine light through it, you have yourself a living cell. So the only reason I really want to put this part of his sh uh, shoulder is so that I could show you that he does have that sort of articulated ringed body kind of and i'll just put a couple rings here just to well we might as well just finish this part we'll bring this down and see how much fun we're having i don't know about you guys but i'm having fun yeah. i love it that's one of my favorites <laughs> so if you guys have skill as an artist i'm sure you do you uh wait a minute matt so if they didn't see hear my podcast how did you just have all these cool friends i do <laughs> nice all right i'm just going to sign this right here and we'll move on to gus gus oh yeah yeah here oh so catherine has been holding her phone the whole time here i can hold it i want to show them the artwork now it's gone i don't know what happened <laughs> that's okay can you guys still hear yeah i'm going to replace there we go back to you I wanted to show the I wanted to show you guys just a soft. Now you could take different. Okay, you could take different shades of pink, lavender, fuchsia. Yeah, turn it so they can see it. Yeah. Okay, give me the phone, please. Thanks. All right, there. Now with different shades of fuchsia and lilac and pink, mess around with it a little bit. You know, he does have actual colors, but you guys are free to do whatever you want. Like, have, a, have fun with it, you know? Maybe he'd look good in yellow and green. I don't know. But 
That's your piglet. And I want you to take care of it. Okay. So on your work and be proud of it. Now, can I see your work? Can they hold up their work? Oh, that's fantastic. Matt, here, like that's fantastic. Let me see. Oh, my Tori, piglet yay. looks like Olaf. <laughs> that's okay. Hey, Caitlin, did you draw? Wait, Samantha, I can't see yours yet. And Matthew, that's fit. Matt, that's yours. That's mine. There's amazing. nobody else here. Oh, there we go, Samantha. Oh, thank you. And then who's this, Danny? Is this Danny? Yes. I call this smell? Piglet Olaf. Oh, and Laura, you're just perfect. <laughs> uh, let me see, Caitlin. Let me see, honey, if you could show it up. Oh, that's fantastic. So you'll do what I said. All of you can do this. I don't know, Lori. That's really good, man. You've been I don't know. It wasn't as good as yours. Mine's a scribble, scrabble mess. Come on, I told you guys. I was like, now, I did you know? I can't keep it. Up. Was it was just Piglet, and I moved at the speed of me drawing while talking. If I don't have to talk, I can really speed. scribble fast. But <laughs> yes, yeah, we are doing Zerg, if you don't mind. <laughs> and I'd like to keep it to the heads, maybe, just to get you guys into it. Yeah. This is a lot of fun. I'm having fun with you guys. And, and Piglet is a simple character, basically. He's very simple, really. So I wanted to start off with something simple to just see how you guys responded. And you guys are rock stars, man. Every single one of you. Matt, I didn't know you could draw too, dude. You took me. I kind of thought you were like this technical, like, <laughs> left-brained person that was, you know, one step in the next step. But no, you took to that. Your imagination is fantastic, man. I used to love yeah. to draw. Yeah, well, it shows. It was really amazing. I thought it was someone else. I thought Matt was someone else. I didn't know you drew along with us. <laughs> and Samantha, yours is great. Now, take your drawing, seriously, and put another piece of paper over it and hold it up to a window or somewhere you get light through it and just clean up your work a little bit. That's all we do. And we sit there for eight hours a day just sketching and cleaning it up and sketching and cleaning it up. And after a while, you don't really need an eraser because you're just scribbling. All right, so I'm just going to turn my page over. And we're going to do Gus Gus. Now, in this scene, Gus Gus, Cinderella has Jack and Susie, these two mics that are her friends, and a couple birds. <clears throat> and they're wonderful. But, oh, the owner, the, the stepmother has mice traps everywhere. And poor Gus Gus gets caught in a mouse trap. Now, he's very, very simple. I mean, really dumb. And uh, he doesn't have any clothes on. So Cinderella sees him in this mouse trap, and he doesn't know left from right, up from down. He's just a mess. But he's hungry, and he needs friends and a family. So Cinderella makes him a little sweater, a little hat, and she puts it on him, and he's part of the family, and he's all set. From that point on, Gus Gus, yeah, there he is. Gus Gus is so proud of himself and he just wants to go and fight the evil stepmom because now he's all brave and they keep, you know, and they feed him and he, you know, they have great adventure. So if you haven't seen Cinderella in a while, there's a little dynamic between Gus Gus, Jock, Susie and Cinderella. And it's when Cinderella's having the worst part of her life when she's just, you know, a cinder maid basically. So for the piglet drawing, we started with a circle and you'll find that most drawings were going to go ahead and do that. So about the size of an orange, and if you can see where if you can see where my hand is, I'm leaving space up here for the hat and his ears, kind of, and a little bit of space down here for, for like maybe his arms we can put in. We'll see how it goes, but let's get his face done. So real light, and I'm drawing with my shoulder here. I know you can't see it, and it looks like my hand and my wrist, but really, it's my shoulder making the circles. I should have told you that in the first drawing. There's a ball on your shoulder. It's a joint, and it wants to make perfect circles. So if your circle isn't really that great, remember, we're only trying to find the center of it anyway. But if your circle isn't that great and you want to work on it, extend your pencil as far as you can and get that, the paper that far away and just practice. At Disney, for animation, they made us draw circles for eight hours a day for an entire week, 40 hours of sitting on a piece of paper, making circles, circles of every size. Circles, circles, circles. And after the first week, they said, this is fantastic. I'm like, cool. Can I draw Mickey now? They said, nope. One more week of circles. And I'm like, oh, come on. And they're like, but this time you have to do it with your left hand. So I can draw circles with my left hand and my right hand so easily now for 80 hours of sitting there. And then I can do it for every sketch. But 
I just want to tell you that when you're in the Disney training, when they say, oh, you think you're an animation artist, they break you all the way down to you forget everything. And then they start very simply and build you back up in their Disney-esque style. I'm trying to give you air quotes, but it's not working out. Um, <laughs> so the Disney style is, is a family-friendly thing, and they want to make sure that you kind of adhere to that. But once you do, and you can prove that you have the same heart as Walt or Mickey himself, they assess you. And what they give you is, uh, let me see, I have it right here, if you'll bear with me. It's really not very glamorous, but it is a Disney stamper. And when you push it down, it says copyright Disney. And there's only 12 of us in the United States that have this stamper. Because once you're assessed on all your drawings, you have the ability to teach them all to other artists to teach. So I can train you to teach the guests from, from doing that. That's a great honor to have that from Walt Disney World. You know, it's, I'm really lucky to have it. So I don't usually abuse it or anything. I never draw the characters smoking cigarettes or doing anything untoward. I keep them kind of just as they were sketched. And that's another thing. As artists, you're going to love this. In animation, when we had downtime, I could go into the animation building. And in the animation building, they have... Um, I don't know how to switch back to me again because it's a blank screen. Yeah, I got oh, it. I'm thank taking, you. Thank I'm you, Matt. <laughs> I want to tell you this because as artists, they're going to love this. So in the animation building behind where the guests can't go, it's just for guest members. You go in and you have to be an artist, first of all, or they won't even talk to you. So you have to show your ID. And then they trust you. You go into this air. Like when I say air conditioning, I mean, it's like temperature set at 55 degrees, 24 hours a day, seven days a week into a vault where they have drawers and drawers and drawers and you have to put on white gloves and you go in, you open the drawers and I swear to you, they have books of the original sketches of all the characters. Oh, thank you so much. So the original Gus Scott sketches are in there and you're allowed to take them and then carefully make a Xerox of them and then put them back. You're not allowed to draw on them or get any oil from your fingers on them. So that's a little cool piece of Disney history. A lot of people don't know that you get to do that. It's really kind of special. All right, Gus, Gus, we have our circle. Let's see if Catherine can get me back. Very good. Now, his face is three-quarter. So, you know, there's portrait, there's profile, and then there's three-quarter. We're going to move this to three-quarter, just like we kind of did with Piglet. And so you're going to bring your line like three-quarters. Mine might be a little bit more. I'm not the least bit worried about it because then I'm going to bring my horizontal line over. And that will give me the center of my circle, basically. I know you're thinking the center would be over here, but remember, it's a sphere, so it's turned. So any one point could be the center of it. I just want to give you the longitude and the latitude to make it happen. Now, he's actually looking down. His face is turned, and he's looking down. But we can do that with his eyes. For right now, I want you to come across right across the middle and just make a line just like this, just a bent line. But look where it is. Can you get it closer to them? Yeah. Here's my guidelines. And then this line starts over here and goes all the way over there. Why? Well, just so we can, if that line's there and this is his dimple, again, I'm right on my horizontal line. Then look, I just come down and around. Down and around. Down and around. And look where I am because when I go like this, Gus Gus's nose, right in the center of his face. Look how happy. Now he's got a little cheek here because he's looking down. So his cheek would be, be mindful of the dimple because the cheek and the dimple, they have a great relationship and the airspace between them it should be respected because it, it kind of sets up the whole style of the, the actual drawing. So the artist that came up with Gus Gus or the artists, you know, it's like 500 artists to make a, to make a feature animation movie. You know, one person could just be on color. I'm going to give them one eye so you can see it. If you can hold it above it for them so they can see it square on. Yeah. All right. And then I'm going to come over here with the other eye. And we're just going to take it up. Think of them as like tombstones or surfboards stuck in the sand, kind of. Yeah, that way he's kind of looking in the center. And what I'll do is I'll shade those in for you so they have more value and you can see them. One eye is a little bigger because it's closer to you. I'll cross hatch it through his eye and give you a darker value so you can see it. I'll round this part off for you. There, see if you can show them that. 
That's Gus Gus. Yeah. We're going to come up with this eyebrow since it's attached to the eye. See, once you have one of the, one of the, one of the elements or one of the items that you're drawing, the spatial relationship between them really matters. Like you can really, and just like in Piglet, we're doing the eyes and the nose and the mouth. And just like that, we have here, I can darken this for you now too. I should actually go over it with the marker for you. I'm worried they can't see it. No, I know you're doing everything you can. I mean, just in the nature of Zoom calls, things can get lost. Looks good also, from what I can see. It does? Okay, yeah. good. Thank you so much. I love the feedback. It helps me a lot. Normally, I go to schools and I have auditoriums full of kids and I do this. Or I'll go to parties that families want to have or like the police department or Comcast or Ronald McDonald House. And I'll go and I'll give little drawing classes live in person with big pads and stuff. It's a really, really rewarding thing to be able to do. So I don't want you to think, oh, great. I learned how to draw Gus Gus. Yeah, but go to a little party or go where there's sick kids and draw because you all can do it. And my job is to you. And once I teach you, I've looked at all your drawings. They're fantastic. You could very well go to Ronald McDonald House and spend some time helping the kids if you wanted to. Nobody would ever stop you. There's a line between his eye and his nose, which is kind of his chubby cheek. It kind of hits the nose there, and it kind of comes like right next to the eye here, but it's a nice little curve like this. And it's kind of important that you get that right. Because coming off of his head, which now that that eyebrow is in, you'll notice I'm just a little higher on this eyebrow than I am on this one. If I draw a line across, you'll see that. See how this eyebrow crosses that line? Can you go above it and show him? Yeah, so this eyebrow is just a little higher because this is going to be where his hat's going to sit. And we're just going to bring over a line where his hat's going to be and just stop. We don't need to get onto it. What I do need to do is they'll come in here and look, bring all these wild. Gus, Gus has, can you go above? Just go, just don't go in my face. Above my head. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, guys. Here, I'll take off my hat. It's all good. Yeah, Brim won't be. I think mean, I'm trying here for you, you know? You're doing great. What we gotta it's do. working. <laughs> oh, you guys are so kind to me. Thank you so much. I, seriously, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. We're going to go ahead and put in his, his ruffled like hair right there. I want him to mark uh, that line. Now, he's chubby. So somewhere off to the side here, because he's looking down, remember? He's like, ta-da, look at my new clothes. I have to keep it somewhere else in my tent. All right. So right along, so you know, I have this circle and it's great. I find different ways to use it right here. I'm going to use it for his double chin, which he needs. You're not showing it. You have to look at that when you do this. Okay. Oh, you are? Oh. All right. Well, want me to hold it? No, I want you to draw. <laughs> okay. So I know that the cheek comes out from his nose to here. So I make a little mark. And then I think, okay, well, now how wide is this head? Because even though we started with a circle, his head is not a circle. It would be more of like a square, if anything. So I want to start sculpting with my pen right to where it is, looking at my model sheet the whole time so that I can keep the Disney accuracy going as best I can. This looks really far over, but it's accurate because right here, about this far from his, his eyebrow, we come over. There's going to be the beginning of his ear and just watch. I just have muscle memory, so I know from doing this, then it'd be about that big. And that's just a simple, look how light I'm drawing, guys. And I'm not worried about anything. It's a cartoon of a mouse. We're not, there's absolutely nothing to be worried about here. Now I like it. I'm going to go over it a few times and just drag my pencil. Once I have it, then I'm going to actually commit to it. And now we have his, now it looks like they have an extra line here. So this line will come down and keep it very round. A little secret I want to show you that some of the feature animation artists showed me when I was training what really came. I thought I knew it all, you know, eight years of art school, four years of engineering school. I thought I knew a lot, but I didn't know that. I didn't know a lot of things. It's funny how much you can learn in life. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and darken that just to commit to it. That way, if you guys feel like, oh, this is kind of wide, yeah, Gus Gus is fat. He's he's rotund. <laughs> he's roomy. Yeah. But man, is he cute. And is he sweet. 
and is he loyal and is he brave and is he stupid? But he learns quick. All the other mice kind of take care of him. Now, I know somewhere up here is going to be the top of his hat. So I just want to put like really light little marks because we're starting with a blank piece of paper. And we'll put a Disney animation character on it. You know, not a lot of people can say they can do that. You guys are crushing this. So I'm going to just find his hat about where it needs to be. If you can go above it to show them, because from that angle, what they're seeing is the wrong thing. Yeah. Well, no, you can just stop and adjust when you get a chance. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. You don't have to hold it forever. Like here, pull it back down here like you are. Yeah. Let me get, let me get this part of his hat in. This is a little longer than I want. So I'm going to bring this down a little further. Yeah. See, I'm talking to you. I'm not focusing. I got to focus. Sorry. I know you're doing everything you can. This is not a knock on you. I'm just saying. I know it isn't, babe, but you're doing great. She can write. She can hold the phone. She's a rock star. So once we have that hat in, I'm going to move fast. If you can show them this part of the page. Yeah, very good. I think that ear comes out like this, and this doesn't really make sense. But I have to be true to what they drew. And so I'm going to go ahead and put the other ear right here. That looks so weird to me. It doesn't look like it matches this year at all. That's the drawing they have. Show them. Mm. Look at this. Look at that funny Good ear thing. they have there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but he does have his hat on. They could push his head, his ear forwards. They could spin it around. I don't know. There would be his hand here. So I'm going to put like a really light circle if you could show them that. And I'm not sure that's where I want it, but I, in my drawing, I mean, show them in my drawing. So I put his hand. That's about where it is. Like, here's his ear. It's probably a little closer. So that's, I just want to kind of figure out where I'm going with this. But we're not going to write too much about this because he's got whiskers. Now, behind this nose, if you can show him, excuse me, and in animation, there's like, there's sound effects. We listen to music and we listen to songs from the movie while we draw. So you're really in a great, happy mood. But whoosh, whoosh, real quick like that. Don't let the pencil drag. Whoosh, make a decision and stick to it with eyelashes too like making that sound i know that sounds ridiculous but the truth is it gives you just the confidence you need to take a deep breath and make the stroke because i did all that work and i could ruin it with these whiskers you know i'm going to go ahead and darken the parts i want to keep and commit to i don't really like this ear but i am committed to not change it if they put it because i got these these are official pieces from the movie that i got now, if that's his one arm is over here, which I think they kind of quit on it. I do. I think they quit on it, really. I can bring his hand down here a little bit more. So you see, I'm just messing around. But I know that his fingers are going to come out. And there'll be one like this and one like this. And when I do it with the black marker, oh, it'll all be so beautiful. You just bring his fingers out. He's, they're really loose. Back then when they did this, I guess it was in the 50s, you know, they don't really have such detail. But that's the charm of this movie. We bring out his thumb. I'm going to bring his little, his little hand muscle around. And there we go. And so when I just darken that a little bit for you, you guys can see. Yay! I love drawing with other artists. I love drawing with little kids. And I love drawing with older people. And anybody that wants to do it, really. But when you get to do it with other artists, you can just be yourself and talk. His arm comes all the way down, which I can leave this to over here. Let me just darken that so they can see it. It kind of goes like this and then like this. And so on my next pass, you'll see I'm going to really focus a little bit more and try to get a little truer of a sketch so that the next artist that goes behind me to trace it and get ready for film is pretty accurate. Plus in animation, we have to lay them on top of each other so we can make the characters move. Now, just to finish this drawing off and give Catherine, a break, and then we're going to do Zerg, I promise, and then you can go. And you've all got an A plus because you paid attention. His other hand from this ear is somewhere in this area. So I'm just going to real quickly go around his thumb, bring his thumb out, stop. There's a little muscle for his hand. Bring the other side of his hand over. You're right in my eye, man. <laughs> it's okay, but I can't see through it. No, I know. I, I, you have the hardest job in here. Matt's got it made. Samantha's got it made. Lori's got it made. Danny's got it made. Caitlin's got it made. Catherine, yeah, you're in trouble. You're in the weeds, kid. I'm scribbling fingers here really quick, as fast as I can, okay? 
actually this this pinky comes the other way yeah and then that's it guys and then we'll stop with gus gus but look at the excitement now i like to take a little bit of white acrylic honestly and go ahead and put a little dot of white acrylic in each eye it's not on the disney drawing but they leave us a lot of wiggle room when it comes to highlights and shadows so as long as you're pretty accurate they trust the artist within you to do the right thing and i'm just going to go ahead and scribble this really and show you yeah he is new clothes oh and then we have to have his belly a little bit sorry all right it's right in my face man i can't see though when it's in front of my face so that's where we'll stop with that that'll be his arm it's funny they don't really even have a sleeve over here for that other arm but like i said it's an old drawing but it's accurate and it's gus gus My name is Timmy Britt, so I sign T-I-M-B-R-I-T-T -T, and then cross all my T's and dot my I's with what year I did the artwork, so I always know. Now, if we can show them Gus Gus, I can do it, so you can have a break. Yeah, it's really simple. Like, that hand is such a mess, but we can fix it in post. The accuracy of it's pretty close, though. That's amazing. All right. Awesome. Would you guys like to do Zerg's head? It's, it'll be fun. Let's do it. Yeah. But Catherine just needs a break for a second, so I'm going to flip my page over here. What? Oh, I want to see yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's right. So hold them up as close as you can so I can see them. Wow. Oh, Matt, yours is so good. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, Matt. Oh, wait, wait. Don't bring them down. Oh, Samantha, I love how light you're drawing. I can't see it that well, but I can see enough to see that it's perfect. Lori, God, you're so good at this. Oh, Danny, that's perfect. And Caitlin, yay! See, Caitlin, you just had to warm up with the drawing. That's all. We started off with pickup. They're fantastic, guys. Thank you so much. Wow, Matt, you are a good artist. That's fantastic. Zerg is really simple, and we're just going to do his face, and it won't take that long. Is Catherine before okay? We do any further, <laughs> she's just got to rest her arm for a minute. You know, two in a row. It's it's a lot. But look what you're doing for art. Walt would be proud of you. Mickey is somewhere right now, just clapping, going yay. So that's the magic here. Oh, I can put my hat back on. What? All right. Uh, all right, Zerg. Do you feel ready for it, Catherine? I'll make this pretty quick. So we did Piglet, who really starts off with like a uh, oval. Gus Gus, who was kind of circular and square. So then Zerg won't be any um, mystery that we're going to start off with just a rectangle. And, and really, seriously, I just want you to give me a rectangle really light and loose about there so now you'll have this much airspace above your page and just give me a rectangle like that it's really kind of that simple and if you can move the camera i'll get out of the way so they can see it it's a rectangle now he's also three quarters so i'm going to bring a guideline right down here three quarters of the way over his eyes are up really high so we're going to get that line in for where his eyes would sit and we can almost begin i think we should because Catherine's poor hand so right on this guideline at the center, right? I want to bring up an eye. I want to go ahead and put in just a big Zerg eye. Rawr! He's like so mad. I love Zerg. He's great. And then we'll put in his eye and we are, and we have begun. Now if you can show it right above them so they can see, because if their drawings are crooked, it's your fault, not my fault, not their fault. It's your fault. Catherine. It's all good. How's for that for gratitude? So yeah. Do you hear match up in the savior? He's such a good guy. Oh, she knows. I'm just picking on that fun. She knows she's the greatest friend magic ever had. Now with that there, oh, well, let's go ahead and bring the other one. But the other one's like closed almost because he's he's from the side and he just got whacked with a with one of those little Nerf balls from the from Rex in the game. So his other eyeball is just so smushed in this corner here. And if we can, if you can hold that above it, they can see it. Very good. Now, that's why we have the rectangle. Okay, can you, you have a hard time? Okay, I can hold it with one hand and draw it the other. Are you sure? Absolutely. I'm the greatest thing that ever happened to the phone. So many talents. No, I can't do it. I stink. All right. So at the end of my, <laughs> at the end of my, at the end of my rectangle is a great place to go ahead and put in one of Zerg's horns. Guys, it's just a bent line like this. That's all it is. And then this way, and we have to just be mindful of the thickness because he is a he's a child's plaything. I'm Zerg and I. 
No, no, that's Buzz Lightyear. I'm Buzz Lightyear and I protect the galaxy from the frets of Zerg. So with this eye already in the shape, then you can see we just go like that. All guys, and then we just bring up this side braille. Look at that. Just with a couple triangles and a rectangle, a couple semicircles. Now, this eyebrow where the back of his head comes out here. So you want to bring this line kind of down. Catherine's in my way a little bit, but I can't be mad at her. But you want to have that part of the back of his eye. Now, if you can show them square on. Yeah, that's what we're going for. I'm actually, it looks like I'm off my page here at the top. That's okay. It's better to bleed things off than to force them every single day. Disney will tell you that. This eyebrow, however, comes down like this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm giggling, but I think it's funny. And then this one, we, we get a lot more cursive on this one because it's further away. So the points will be lower. Like this point's really high on the page. This point will be lower because his head is turned and it's really round like this. And it's important that you kind of keep them basically the same width. This one a little smaller because his head's turned. But the reason they have to end there and there is because even though we have this rectangle here, I'm going to bring it inside like this. What? And cut that whole edge off and move his face like that. Yeah, see, I've concaved it a little bit. And then with this, I could do the same thing over here. Yeah, go ahead and if you can show them real quick. Now you think that's pretty funny looking, and it is. He's a funny character. The next thing I want to do, though, is I want to put a line right here under that eye, right there. And then I want to come to the center line that I made. And right between his eyes, they want to come down a little bit of a ways and then come, and just make a little mark. And then check it out. Is that okay? You think it's too far? A little higher, maybe. So once I have my tick mark, guys, oh, then it's just green grass and high times forever. We just put a smile here and a smile here. It's not really a smile. He's upset. But I need you to get these three lines in and right kind of where I have them, if you can, as close as possible. Show them, yeah. Because now we have fun. We see this line that comes down here, but we're going to contour this line down along it. So we almost get to the bottom, but we're going to stop. And then we're going to concave this line all the way down to here. Rawr. So we can go ahead and complete his mouth like that. Yeah. Oh. Wait, we're not done yet. Then we go and throw in his lip because there's an edge. So we contour another. Remember, this is a toy. So it's going to be simple shapes and simple colors, but there is a little system to it. So I try to keep my contours as consistent as I can. By that, I mean, like, if this line goes here and I want to have this much space, of, I want to keep it like that kind of space through the whole drawing so that your airspace is equal everywhere. Now, I'll go over this with a marker later. But the best part about this is, oh, these lines go ahead and bring down his teeth. Make sure that they're not completely straight. You know, they're curved a little bit. Oh, he's so mad. And we're almost done, guys. Really, we almost, we're almost done here. I want to bring up his chest plate because we have to put on the Z for Zerg. So I'm going to just build that part right here using the spatial relationships that the drawing gives me. I'm going to come out past here. And kind of stop there for you guys and Catherine's sake. But then I can't forget he's got the cape on. So we want to bring his cape. Now, this is a lot more drastic here. The phone is in my face. So I'm going to, I'm going to draw this around the phone. But that's okay, Catherine, don't worry. That's one part of his cape. The other part comes up and out of here and goes off the page. So we'll just leave these straight lines to represent the edge of that. Then we can bring his mouth down. And there's one part left, guys. Here, I need you to make a... Give me the phone. Catherine is falling apart here, but it's not her fault. You're only human. I need you to make a circle. Well, it's more of an oval, really, because when you're face on, it's a circle. Can you show this side of it a little bit? Thanks. And then we just take the inside and we ribbon it by putting a line there. 
So now we have this shape, like a, like a sliver of a moon kind of. Oh, and then we just go ahead and make the inside of it on this side. So we have the letter O basically, but really it's a cylinder. So you're getting to see like this would be the inside of it. So if I were to shade that a little, maybe it'd make more sense. And this would be the outside of it. Because inside, guys, we just have the Z for Zerg. Now, the drawing they have goes like this. Yeah. That's it. Okay, now if you can hold it above, I can show them with the markers. This, this is a Z for Zerg. This is the medallion on his chest that's in three dimensions. So we only see the one edge and then the inside edge. This would be his breastplate, but we'll only show the top of it right here because it's intruded by his beautiful cape that all bad guys have to have. Then we can go ahead and continue these beautiful lines. You'll notice wherever I can make one line, I will. Think of the person that comes behind you that has to color it in. It's nice if they have a nice straight line. It is their job to fix it, but you want to make it as professional as you can for them. Rawr! You'll never defeat me, Buzz Lightyear. Mm -hmm. So we did Piglet, which was really sweet, kind of, and thoughtful. And then we got a little challenging with Gus Gus because he, you know, that's not the mouse we usually draw. And you know what the best part about this is, Matt? Everybody on the phone tonight is an adult. It's so great to see this many people have not grown up yet. You all <laughs> stayed lost boys and lost girls. And that's so refreshing for me. If they're in this, if they listen to this podcast, they're, uh, they're like me. <laughs> this is great. Matt, will anybody else get to watch this or is it just like right now? Like, how does this work for you? This is just right now, but I can, I can post it on links and or un, post it unlisted in case you want to send it out to me. I'd love for people to be able to see it. I, I told yeah. a lot of people about it. So I, I was hoping that maybe they could find a way. Yeah. Can't they sign up for your thing? Yeah. Your, uh, Patreon. Yeah. Yeah. Your Patreon. Yeah. 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 So that's Zerg in a hand, you know, in a few minutes. This uh, this would come over here. Catherine's starting to cough. I think we've lost our tech girl. She I think she's there. So I, I, got it. I added this line here, but I can hold it now while you guys can finish up your sketch. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> Catherine. You guys succeeded. They're all saying thank you. She's like on the ground crying, sucking up the drama. No, she's not. She's not. I'm just teasing. I'm having fun. I don't know how to sell thank you to somebody. I know. Thank you. I know you worked really hard on this, Catherine. I'm real proud of you. All right. Does everybody feel like they're ready to show me theirs? I think so. <laughs> Crazy Zergs. All right. Let's see them. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. This is so great. Oh, you guys are amazing. Oh, Matt, I love yours. Lori, do you, are you an animator, Lori? You're fantastic. <laughs> And, and Danny, your, your lines, and Caitlin, and Samantha, yes, look at Samantha's. Oh, guys, yay! I I'm only so taught that. You, <laughs> you taught that. Very good. Well, he learned. So, so do you mind telling me a little bit about yourselves before you go? Like, Samantha, tell me about yourself. Um, I am from Connecticut. Um, I work in Parks and Rec during the day and I'm a really? How Disney cool fanatic. That? Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so get, to get to draw with a Disney animation artist is kind of cool. I hope you thought it was cool. Yes. But you could do cool. it yourself if you just went down and just went through all the, you know, the boot camp they make you go through. I think I, your work <laughs> is beautiful. Oh, thank you. So I'm really proud of you for the Parks and Rec too. Thank you for that. You know, thanks for keeping that going for us as Americans. It's great. I'm really glad. You said in Connecticut, huh? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Is, is there a big park in Connecticut that's a national park or or you just take care um, of like the local little parks? So I work in a local town. 
but we okay, have cool. a good sized park. We have a good sized park with a swimming area and splash pads Aww. and all that. Yeah. It's good to see you helping and building and doing good positive things. Yeah, and can definitely. we move on to Lori? Lori, tell me about yourself, honey. So um, I'm Matthew's biggest fan because I'm his mom. Oh, no way. <laughs> you don't look old enough. You got more stories than Walt Disney. Now you can't. So, can't and I mom. was also. Well, you must Disney be very World. proud of him. I, I'm extremely proud of him, but I was also at Disney World, not the same day as you, but probably soon after that. Um, oh, so I'm Matthew's not only his mom, his biggest fan, but when he and his sister were little, every time we went somewhere, I always had a pen and paper. And um, I always gave them the pen and paper to keep themselves amused and would tell them to draw. Oh, fantastic. Because now both of your drawings tonight were, like, I thought you might have been an animation artist, Lori. Honestly. No. <laughs> no. I did have a yeah. hard time. Talented, though. Me. You're a great teacher. Oh. I appreciate so, so that. So the truth is that, that you guys love art, you love Disney, but Samantha's not an artist, and Lori, you're not an artist as a professional. Yeah, did you see your drawings? They were so good. I mean, I was just whipping through and scribbling it. You guys were right there with me. Your proportions are right. Your spatial relationships are right. Your airspace around it was right. You guys are amazing. Danny, let's Thanks. hear about you. Um, I'm originally from Arizona, but now I live in Missouri. And it's a goal of mine to go to Marceline, hopefully very soon. I think it's Yay. three hours from, my, from where I live. Um, and now I'm an executive assistant at Amazon, Just not Very an artist. Good. <laughs> well, but your drawings, you, I see, well, the truth is you guys are artists, but as a professional artist, you really have to go through a lot of crap. My dad was kind of right about not being an artist. I should, he said, if I would have known taking you to Disney World at a, as a five-year-old would have this effect on you, I would have not taken you to Disney World. I would have instead taken you to NASA because he wanted an astronaut and he didn't want an <laughs> artist. So. But as it turns out, now he's super proud of me and everything. So things worked out. But I'm glad you work at Amazon. Now, Marceline, tell the other listeners what Marceline is, sweetheart. Where Walt's from. Danny. And where Main yes, Street is modeled after. Is exactly right. He went back to that old town look. And, you know, it's funny. They're, they're really struggling to get cast members now. So I was just there on my birthday last week. I was there. And I'm in Texas now. And I got to tell you. And they were the nicest people. I want to qualify this, but there was people with tattoos up and down their arm, crazy earrings, hair, six different colors. In Marceline, people didn't dress like that back then, you know? And the whole idea for what was, well, let's make people as approachable as possible. So if I'm a little kid and I'm lost or I have a question, I have no fear of walking up to a case member. The time of being a guest was... A really proud job to have in the world you know we were looked up as you know just leaders of entertainment and family fun you were safe you were friendly with the, the tide of world and economics it's the way it is disney's really having a hard time uh just getting you know that same type of people for the what they're willing to pay them to take your tickets and to hand you popcorn so you'll see some changes as disney evolves i guess but it's kind of sad that back in marceline it was a real nice there's a moment in time when women and men, we just had respect for each other, heard about each other. If we did something, we did it right. You know, it was before my time. So I'm not bragging here. I'm just saying that you look back, like everything got painted every once a month, or I mean, once a year, the whole thing would be painted. And everybody took a lot of pride in everything. So some of that magic, I think, a little bit lost me for now. But at the same time, tattoos are very popular now. And of people with tattoos anymore. So Walt could only see what was right in front of him. And what was right in front of him was that the down home, you know, be approachable, be friendly, be happy for all members of the family. Where now it's everybody's so familiar with it that I think they can loosen, lighten up it on some of the rules. But it was to my sister's anniversary in Magic Kingdom with people with two color hairs and tattoos up and down their arms, not covered in band-aids, which would look ridiculous anyway. So <laughs> And as it were, the guy, the, the girl, it was a female, characters all over her arm. So it wasn't like it was offensive. I, you know, I, I love tattoos. I don't, I have them on the bottom of my feet. I do on the very bottoms. I have the letter A and the letter Y. Oh, was fun because me and my friends, we had a baseball team called Allen Yard and they all got tattoos when they were 18. I'm like, no way. So I got them on the bottom of my feet. So I'm not against uh, tattoos, 
Um, and then, so Danny, show me, uh, show me your Zerg again, because oh I, man, I want to see your progress of three drawings. Come on. He was harder than I expected. I thought this would yeah. be the easy one. This is the one that I thought was the hardest. And, uh, well, and he's got that funny look in his face. He's like, ah, like he's, you know, he's a little, which I love because I'm a Buzz Lightyear fan. Uh, but I think your drawing is great. You have to go over some of it with a darker line or do what I said, get a piece of tracing paper or get a light board or some way to shine through it. And now you don't have to do all the sketching and finding. That's where the focusing, that's where the concentration comes in. When you have that, then it's just your little kid again with a coloring book. My writer just handed me this. This is what my book looks like, just in case anybody sees it. Or we have a place to put it. Maybe we'll show up, but I just want to, they work so hard. I have a whole team of people that worked on it. Oh, yeah. All right. So, Danny, so, so Amazon also is a book. So, thank you for that, too. I was say, you can buy this. You can buy the book on Amazon, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, thank you so much, Danny. Yeah. You guys print it for us, ship it out. I mean, it's really, once all the hard work was done, you guys have taken it over from there. And it's been, it's been great for us, honestly. Really, people are really interested in the story because there's ups and downs. And it's not just art, it's about, you know, chasing dreams and believing in something. So, Caitlin, you're last but not least. Can I? Can you tell me all about you? I want to meet you. Which one? There's like two. I think there's <laughs> a second one. We'll go with you, What's Caitlin, that? since I you just, responded. Yeah, I just. Oh. <laughs> okay, um, I'm a junior mechanical engineering major at UNC Charlotte. Um, nice work! Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Um, I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Um, next semester, um, I'm going to be working as a cast member at the Disney College program. So my arrival date's January oh, 10th. Oh, finally! Yay! That's yeah. so. Oh, oh my God! That's yeah. that's awesome. Listen, I'll tell you something, and I don't want to interrupt you, but I have to just give you some information from being there for years. That when they hire for a position, and they look at how you did, so behave, fly. Do what they ask you. Complain to the other cast members if you want, but don't just know you're even happy. If you can get past this boot camp later on in life, find yourself in a wonderful position. Especially, like I said, as they overturn the apple cart, they put people in positions that really want to be there. And when that comes, they'll pay you for it. So just stick with what you're doing. You don't think there's engineers at Disney? Oh my God. I went to Joel. No, I went for, uh, it was a co op for. The steam fitter so i worked in all the building system engineering kind of stuff safety water bathrooms air conditioning but knowing where to build it and then hide it by carving the concrete to look like trees and stuff was really helpful but i'm so proud of you so yeah. do you have a plan are you hooked up for do you want to like once you leave school do you have a place that you'd like to head for work um my goal is to be a walt disney imagineer so after i graduate with my bachelor's program um I'd like to attend UCF um, with their um, master's program yes, themed experience. Absolutely. So that is what I want to do. Oh my God. So you'll look back on tonight way down the road and you'll say, you know, this goofy guy was teaching me how to draw a piglet. And I thought <laughs> that's what I do. So the things I've told you tonight, I want you to turn to them up because they're true. I wouldn't laugh about anything. And it is an easy. When I was doing it, 200 million, that's a lot of people from all over the world applied for that imagining job and they, they selected one person each year that would do that. And I, I got lucky, really lucky. But I did have what you did. I went to school and schooling is really important for one thing. And don't let anybody tell you anything different for vocabulary. It's not so much how much you learn in school as it is that you learn the vocabulary. And here's why, when you come to Walt Disney World, you're going to want to communicate with other engineers and they're going to be talking about things and you don't want to be lost. You want to understand what they're talking about. So it's not what you build. It's not what you make. It's the vocabulary. Trust me on that. Okay. When you get here, you'll learn how to build stuff. Disney has a certain way to do things, but they need people that understand the vocabulary that can jump right in and, and the fill those needs. So I'm real proud of you, Caitlin. And what a great way to end this. Thank you all so much for your time. And really thanks for putting up with me. I didn't know that you didn't know my story when I first came on. I'm like, I'm just this lucky guy. But now you know, like, to be able to sit and draw with you guys and talk to you guys, it took a lifetime of experiences to be able to do this stuff. So and they're going to hear your oh, story. Oh, it's book. Yes, it's Catherine's like. Yeah, they're going to hear your story on, the, if they have listened to the podcast, they will, um, that I know. And then also, like I said, it's going to go out to everybody. 
Um, I have your link to your book also, Timmy, in the podcast. And I'm going to send this to you, you. Hey, Matt, this was a great idea. Thank you. Well, thanks. Thanks for agreeing to do this. I'll put this up so that this was a great idea to anybody, Timmy. So that way you get to get, we could share it out with whoever. Matt, I must have done 50 podcasts, but you're the first person to say, Hey, would you draw with my guests? Like you're the first person (laughs) to actually put it together. And you see, it wasn't easy, right? We had Catherine holding the phone, dopey and uh, grumpy or over here. Yeah. But we did. And I think judging by your drawings, I think you've all did really well. I thought you were all artists that were eager to draw with me. I'm so sorry. As it turns out, though, we have imagined in the end, you are all artists, very good artists. And Lori, I can't believe you're Matt's mom. I swear you could be. I thought you were his wife or his sister. Like when she told oh, me about no, 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 no. his biggest fan, I thought, oh, you guys are great. Samantha, Lori, Danny, and Caitlin. Thank you all so much. Matt, you are a rock star. This was really cool. You're the rock star. If you, if you Oh, come on. I'm just an ordinary, everyday guy. This was a lot of if fun. Catherine, thank you, Lori. It means a lot. Thank you. you. It does. Yes, You're it was very great. Welcome. And I hope thank that you, you all so learned much. a little bit of something. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you. Matt, just get in touch yeah. with Catherine now about anything, and we'll help promote all this for you, okay? Awesome. This was a lot of fun for me. Like This is a great fun for me. This was a thank blast. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you all. Have a thank great you rest of your so night. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys so much. Bye, all. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much.